Hi guys, Dorota Palicka, international new artist and educator here and today we are gonna be playing with some layered new art like there is so much stuff going on on them but they look so amazing. Have a preview of it in here. And I get you step by step how to achieve this look. I hope you really enjoy it. So let's start. I have prepared those uh, beautiful new art, again a layered look and also with the new colors which just arrived and I couldn't resist, I just had to try them out and play so I have choose the 275 uh, which is uh, a really beautiful mint color and you can also see them all in matte version and in a shiny one day common as collection. Of course I will have to try this pink as well, it's so so pretty but I love it all and it will be probably my new favorites. I always probably say it when I see bright and neon colors. Um, so let's grab those, I'm actually show you all of them quickly as well in a bottle uh, just so you can see it. <clears throat> so the one which we'll be using today is 275. Look at this, it's so nice and and pretty. It's actually nice to see them in a video as well, not only on the pictures. And this one is really nice as well, like I love it so much. Uh, my favorite one of course is this one, like it's so amazing, like just a perfect pink shade. Uh, this one will be really nice too, 274, so nice. And then we've got this one as well and they are all available on our website. I actually cannot wait to try them all uh, but today the first one we will go for is uh, 275. So first of all you want to do those background and um, I, I do really love those layered looks so what I'm gonna do on this needle is I will just uh, fade it into the ombre got my ombre sponges on the forms. I just read it actually today, a couple minutes ago, some question that someone says that's my sponges stick to the form. Mine stick to as well but what you could do it is you could just like um, touch with your form to your hand uh, to make the forms less sticky and then it will be the, the sponges wouldn't stick out as much. Okay so, so if you wrap first wait when dry the paint and then you stick to the yeah, that's, that's what will help, help too, but you don't want the gel polish to cure because then the sponge will become hard okay. um, because it's a gel. It be so used. it has to be, yeah, that's why I'm, I am kind of holding it that direction and away from the light. So I have faded the first, uh, first uh, part of the design and then on this one I'm just going to go slightly different. So we are going to apply the full color here. And I need to do those color uh, swatches for you as well because there is quite a few which I didn't do it. Um, but yeah, we are back on track with recording and everything and I as I have wrote to some of you in the comments like my head is just so full all of different ideas like you know the springtime is always just unbelievably fantastic for me. Okay, let's cook it. I have tried to peel on the one layer with this uh, color and then here the ombre we have to apply the second layer. I could sprinkle it with the um, acrylic um, just to kind of get the better coverage. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna be quite happy doing that way because I want a really nice and pastel -y look. Okay this one is cooked and here we are gonna go different so I'm gonna use a paint French gel and some brush just slap it on it just like in the middle. And uh, then I've got some sponge which are rounded shape. <laughs> this is terrible, I have used it before for some pink color. Um, but also I've got some white so that should work even if I get a tiny bit of those pink which I'm not getting which is awesome. And I'm just fading a tiny bit in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect, like really it doesn't have to. Um, you just want to have lighten up this, um, this color so that's what we'll do. Let's cook it. And I'm just gonna touch up this one on a third layer. I actually should sprinkle it with the um, acrylic, it would be faster. Because it's very delicate color. Okay, let's cook it. Once we have done the spongings and the color application, I'm gonna um, straight away uh, on my um, on my mixing palette put a drop of the of the top coat because I want to mix some glitter and I've got some pink one um, so 
I'm just actually I could just go straight with the bottle that is so pretty and I'm gonna apply this glitter as well this is my messy glitter top coat so I'm not bothered too much and we are also gonna use a transfer foil gel so all those layered looks are absolutely fantastic uh, I love it it just makes it look more dimension and really nice and pretty so what I'm doing now is I'm just applying a transfer foil gel I'm not too fussy about it try to don't put too much on the sides mainly on the middle and cure it 30 seconds same on this one I'm gonna put more in the middle the transfer foil gel and again cook it and I have found some of the foils I had it uh, and I'm gonna use this kind of Aurora transfer foil cut a small piece of it <laughs> come on scissors get into my hand and then let's transfer it into our design so as you can see there's lots of stuff going on that's not this side and what I love about this gel even if you did a mistake you can still transfer the transfer foil uh, of course I don't want the full look because it will be a little bit uh, too heavy that's why I just apply it in some places and now I'm just applying it nice and messy using the same piece of the foil I'm just applying nice and messy look in here as well so this is super quick way to create a beautiful design that looks awesome let's grab my glitter so that's a clean top coat keep this one on the side that's my messy top coat and what I'm doing now is I'm just picking up those glitter and in this part I'm applying it mainly on the places where I've got those transfer foil I just make it look even prettier give it a flash cure and do the same in here so pick up the scoop of my glitter but this time I want this glitter more on the top just some flakes of it and this top coat I'm turning it uh, upside down because there is hardly anything left on it that's why I like to use like if I'm getting my top coat at the end um, what I do it is I turn it, it oh, that's even better I turn it, it either into my messy top coat like for some glitters or like a mixture of the white with the top coat or um, black just to get those sheer colors as well cook it in clean my glitter and then the next step is to apply a tiny bit of the top coat again over it because otherwise we will file through it and also when we're doing a glitter encapsulation you might have um, on smooth surface and I really don't like to paint on on smooth surface uh, I wouldn't use clean top coat I just use the same one I've got it in here so I kind of bring an extra uh, glitter through it and I also this way I kind of find it as good to clean my brush as well because I can get rid of those single glitter partition same in here and if you're not too fussy you could probably get away with it but I can see it there are some bulkiness and imperfections of it because we have encapsulated the glitter and I actually gonna uh, buff it because it will give me a much nicer results so cure it and then that's how they look after we take them off from the lamp so I've got one already here and I'm just gonna take a buffer and buff it okay so just make it nice and smooth and then we can move on into the next step which is painting those beautiful flowers and again just to make the things more interesting I want them to be layered um, so they look fantastic okay so buff the steep just so it's smoother on the clients I would always buff like I wouldn't um, if I'm doing glitter encapsulation I wouldn't leave them without of buffing I just feel like uh, they look bulky and bumpy then
Okay, I'm just gonna do it on my own, the other two as well, and then we can move on into painting. Ta-da! <laughs> so that's them all buffed. And to be honest, it will look nice just like this. You could just slap Aurora Chrome over it and that's it. Uh, because it was my idea as well. I was thinking like, I want to do that. Um, but I decided, no, I will leave Aurora for a different set. Now, for a change, in addition of this uh, mint color, we are going to use 202, just because it's a little bit darker. And for painting with the gel polish, it's really difficult without of using the French gel. And uh, the gel polish has always different consistency and doesn't matter what kind of gel polish you are using gel polish is just different in consistency and it's never going to be uh, as nice results as if you paint with acrylic paints or uh, art um, gels um, because they are um, just just better for those kind of technique okay so i've got some extra scoop of the white for later on for outlining those turquoise one and the uh, uh, white color. We are going to start with uh, taking the turquoise color and just apply it where we want the roses. So in this one, I would like my rose to be kind of in the middle, I would say. Yes, in the middle. So I just apply this dark color and I need to cure it. That's the trouble with the gels as well. Like with acrylic paints, you would uh, just uh, wait for a couple seconds to dry and that's it. Then another one is going to be on the side in here. And then the other one is will be on the side in here. Just mess, like whatever. I just want those dark bar background in there. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is remove some excess of the gel polish from my brush. Here is another tip, guys. I have seen some of you send me a picture of their brush. I'm just going to show you quickly. So some of you have sent me a picture of their brush in that kind of shape. And obviously what's happened as you paint, you have kind of changed the shape. Maybe you have changed the shape of your brush. The one stroke brushes, you want them to be nice and flat like this. So when I cleaning my brush, I make sure they are nice and flat so they can paint nice. Okay. Do not they need to be those flat, flat shape. Anyway, pick up those white <laughs> and the turquoise and let's start painting those uh, flowers. I'm just mixing it not too well. And in the middle, I'm just painting those kind of shape. That looks nice. And then straight away, I can do the pie tiles, which are outside. Again, pick up the color and... and yes, I have painted it on the clients numerous of times, like those roses, they always love it. Uh, straight away, I can paint some leaves. I like to try to kind of save the time because I can't do anything more in this part because it's not cured. Uh, so I'm just doing the parts which, which are fresh. So I'm now just painting the leaves. You have to guys learn one stroke like is the most amazing and effective technique. And when I start doing it, my one stroke wasn't like nice. It took me some time to, to learn it. It isn't easy technique. Like I would say this is the technique which requires the longest time to learn, uh, but it's the most effective one. And there is unlimited possibilities of doing the designs with it. So let's cook it. <clears throat> grab the other two and just repeat the process so if you're watching it you can actually maybe do it it even with me uh, it's even easier then so you just have your paint in there you paint it from the bottom I'm mainly painting with the tip of my brush and then paint another one do the petals which are outside and the petals which are outside I'm kind of I like them to be this shape. So what I'm doing is, again, I'm using not a full brush, um, just the top part of my brush. And this is the one stroke level one brush, just because those flowers are simple and easy. If they're more complicated, I would use the Demaster brush. 
and the leaf I'm just gonna squeeze one in here. She says one and then she slaps another one. Sorry, get it more into the camera. And when I'm doing the leaves, I'm starting at the angle, coming up to the top in a kind of wavy shape and then coming down to give them an extra bits and pieces on the one side. There is so many different types of the leaves you could do it as well. And if this is, guys, one of the first video you're watching, uh, check it out. I do paint a lot of one stroke in this channel because it's my favorite technique. I have, I've got some see-through see places here. I'm not bothered about it. Um, I think it will still look really nice and pretty. You can also do it just with the touches of the brush, just like this. The first row of the petals, which is old side, and that's absolutely fine too. Just try to work kind of irregular, I would say. Like if the things are too, too rounded shape, it is not gonna look nice. So that's why my rose, like, or any type of flowers, I kind of change the shape a little bit because nothing in the nature looks exactly the same. Every single petal is slightly different. Perfect, we can move on into the second layer of the petals. So I'm just gonna grab those two. And the second layer of the petals, what I'm always doing is, again, pick up my colors even more white now because I've got quite a lot of turquoise already so I really want to kind of highlight the things with my white. As you can see I've got mainly white on my brush and before I was painting at this angle now I'm gonna paint at that angle because the petals I'm squeezing are much smaller and because the brush is in an angle shape it allows you to do those kind of petals. And if I would do it on a client, so normally the client holds the hand like this, I would paint like that, you can ask them to put their hand that way, and that's how I'm twisting the tip, because this is a pretty common question as well. Of course, you can do it that on the client. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't, um, depending how difficult is the petal which I'm painting. You know, sometimes I would just twist my hand into the direction I want, but yes, it's easier for me to go that way and faster, and if it's necessarily, I will do it on the client as well. Okay, just squeeze. See, now I, I'm just twisting the brush and I would go the opposite direction. So yes, it is possible to do that way as well. And you can get a really nice, nice petals. I'm gonna touch up those ones too, the leaves. Actually leave this one, so it's a bit more behind it. And then cook it. This one will be almost finished. Do it same in here, so one more time. Actually, two more times for you. I'm not bothered even picking up those turquoise color. I just have white in there. And I cannot place my petal where the empty, like when they join in. So I would just kind of do it in the middle. This always gives me the nicest results. Then go inside. The next petal, I can squeeze it here and then go inside, another one in there, and here, in there, in there. That looks quite nice already. Let's maybe make this one twisted. And I quite like this one, so I'm just doing two touches in there. And Another tip I can give you guys as well, when I start painting the one stroke, um, I was very scared like uh, of doing different new things. Now I'm just trying, even this what I did, it was a try of something completely new on the leaves. I never done it before. I quite like it, why not? Like you can do whatever you want really. Don't be scared to, um, to invite, not, not invite, invent your own technique. Like, even the shape of the nails I'm doing is kind of my own. I always kind of break the rules. <laughs> but I like it the way. Like, I don't like a real square nails. Like, I think they look really chunky and bulky. And I was always against this rule. Sometimes it was giving me a troubles, but uh, 
I fight it and I kind of created my own style. Okay, there we are. And let's cook it. Okay, they are ready for a top coat. And now I'm gonna use the clean one, of course. <laughs> nice and clean one. And then we can move on into the last part of this design, which is this kind of 3D effect. And I love using um, that as well um, because it lasts you ages and it's, it's just an, an extra extra dimension going on on the nails. They look pretty just like that even, like really nice and pretty. And time-wise, I would say this set would take me maybe 15 minutes extra than applying a full set of the gel polish because with the gel polish you have to go twice um, you have to be very careful like how you going around the cuticle area like really nice and close to it and everything and here I would just use the um, sponge to shape it slump the glitter around it and it will take me probably the same amount of the time plus those extra uh, roses but anyway we are ready for the last step which is the liner brush and what I'm gonna do it now is just grab this white, get my brush ready. I wanted it to be really nice and um, thin, faint, like hardly anything on it. And what you want to do it is in some places, you want to just highlight it as white. And of course we are not gonna top coat it because I want this white to look like 3D. So just in some places. On the leaves. but just on the one side. Here I'm missing something, so straight away I'm gonna add those two waves and then go like this. Here I've got amazing petal. And this one I'm gonna prolong it, so I'm just finding it starting point and then prolong it and change slightly the direction of it. Look, it looks so much deeper inside. And I can do the same with this one here. Let me twist it your direction because quite often I hide this view from you. And we have made it look much deeper. Okay, the leaf. I have changed direction of the leaf as well, so it's going more inside. Change direction of this leaf as well. Nice and pretty. Then this one is above all this one, so you are higher. There we are. And then I'm gonna prolong them. That's plenty on this one. I think it just looks rich and, and beautiful. Let's cook it. Okay, what we've got in here, middle one. So on the middle one, I will go like we've got it on the farm. I do really like this kind of pattern. Some sort of leaf or something. So I've got one in here, then it needs something stronger there. Just for a balance, something stronger here. This leaf, I want to make it really nice and delicate because it's twisting. There we are. It's kind of folded leaf. This one is hardly visible. We could even just leave it without of highlighting it. 
that's plenty on this side. Now here I can do even a twist. I love this leaf here, heavier there and then lighter. This one can be pre-longed. This one definitely we can make it nice and defined. Do something about this place, I didn't like it. This one again it will give us a similar situation what we had it in the previous tip, so longer. That's almost look like a cauliflower as well, if I would put something in a middle. <laughs> so this is sometimes how I'm creating the things, like I would do one design and then I can see it like, uh, okay, that will look like this and then just adjust it and, and create something new. And another time when I my, my head is exploding, like so, even like today when we got those uh, new gel polishes, I was like a child. And we could do one more petal here because it looks a bit empty. So here I've got my kala flower again, but we'll do it a leaf out of it. Really nice shape. Um, it just makes you me so inspired. Like any new product on my desk is like, oh no, I need to play with it. And then I'm trying this and this. So this is always so cool. And it's already really late today. Um, like obviously, I think it was Carol. Carol was it? Yeah, I just sent you the picture of the set and you say like you want to learn this rose. So here is this video for you. Um, and uh, obviously the um, collection will post it the first thing tomorrow morning to you so you can get as excited as I am at night time <laughs> playing with new colors. Okay, just this more detail here. Gosh, I hope I, I have remembered it right, the name. I'm terrible with the names. I am so bad with the names. <laughs> We've got the um, sandbed shop as well. And like every single time I have to ask the people about their names. But I can remember the birthdays, like the dates, the car registration numbers. That's not the trouble for me. It's just, just the names I'm terrible with. This leaf is so beautiful and again that was trying something new with those um, little strokes here. And again on this one I'm just gonna go very little here, very little there so this glitter isn't lonely. We don't like lonely glitter. <laughs> Let's cook it and then I can show you a final set. I have really enjoyed recording it today because it was a, a playtime for me like a child, you know, getting new toys. Now a French gel is, is still gel, uh, so you need to remove your inhibition layer from it. So just grab the UV cleanser and remove inhibition layer from it. It doesn't need top coat and it's gonna last and stay, no problem. You can do the dishes with it, you can go gardening as well. It will last. This this specific gel, it took us years actually to, uh, to design it uh, and test it in different kind of conditions. Remove inhibition layer here, there we are. My blue tack, move it. And this is the ring finger. I love them all together and I love that we've got even those transfer foil, it is hardly visible, it's only visible in some places, but it looks amazing. Let me show you the full set for those of you who are watching us always to the end. <laughs> and ta-da! I always like to check it as well at different angles, so look at this. So pretty. And I love when the nails like showing so many different like things on them because it's like, so difficult to do it. And those 3D look because of the French gel, very delicate, but it looks absolutely amazing. 
Okay, I'm sending you huge glittery hugs and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!